Michael Avenatti, he's the lawyer who once represented adult film star Stormy Daniels in a lawsuit against President Trump. Well, he's been sentenced to prison for trying to extort Mikey, excuse me, ex extort money from Nike. And we have some video of him entering the courthouse uh, today uh, in New York City. There you can see him. Sentenced to about two and a half years, 30 months uh, in prison for extortion and fraud. There he is going into the courtroom earlier this morning in lower Manhattan waiting to be sentenced. Avenatti was convicted last year on three counts, including extortion and wire fraud, uh, for allegedly trying to force Nike executives to pay him $25 million in an extortion attempt. Uh, he had threatened the company with bad publicity, excuse me. So uh, we want to now play out for you some of the remarks that he and his lawyer gave after the sentencing came down a bit earlier. Here those are right now. So very brief comments uh, there by Michael Avenatti after the sentencing today in Lower Manhattan. You can see uh, that we had some uh, reporting from the courtroom that he was crying as the sentence was handed down, that he said, quote, I and I alone have destroyed my career, my relationships, my life, and there is no doubt that I deserve to pay, have paid, and will pay a further price for what I have done. Well, we want to go into a conversation I just had uh, with a New York Magazine reporter who has spoken to Avenatti multiple times uh, over the last several years, and we were getting his reaction to this news today and kind of charting Michael Avenatti's rise and fall. Here's that conversation right now on Live Now from Fox. Morning, Michael Avenatti, the former lawyer to adult film star Stormy Daniels and the short-lived media star, was sentenced to 30 months in prison today by a judge in New York for attempting to extort Nike and uh, defraud clients. Uh, we're going to bring in now New York Magazine contributing writer Ben Jacobs to, to uh, really break this all down. Uh, ben, thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you yet again. You know, this sentencing was much less uh, than what uh, a lot of people who were watching this thought that Avenatti was going to get. Why do you think that was the case? Well, the judge said he seemed unfair because uh, Mark Garagos, who is a lawyer who was also involved in this, had not been charged at all. And uh, the judge decided that it was really going to be, uh, you know, wouldn't serve justice for Avenatti to get this severe sentence when this person who he termed a co-conspirator uh, wasn't going to get off scot-free. So uh, the sentence was, so the judge decided to reduce this. It also matters that Avenatti is also facing an entirely separate trial in several months in California and not facing more severe charges. So that may or may not have factored in, but that was the upfront reasoning that it would be unfair to give Avenatti a sig that significant of a sentence and 30 months in jail is still quite a bit when the co-conspirator wasn't charged at all. And can we kind of go into a little bit uh, of the extortion scheme uh, itself? Obviously, Nike is a massive multinational corporation. Michael Avenatti was alleged, uh, alleging that Nike was, you know, extorting these uh, amateur athletes, college athletes, and he was going to expose all of this uh, upwards yes. of uh, a major payment of $25 million. Uh, and so obviously that fell through and did not go forward. But why do you think he even came up with this scheme itself? That's that's a good question. Um, that Avenatti was going through really severe financial difficulties. Uh, that when he became famous, uh, 
he was broke. He had a failed coffee company. There are allegations that he's facing trial for that he was taking money from clients and he was in a severe hole and living a pretty uh, lavish uh, lifestyle. And, you know, part of this seemed to be just an attempt to pay for that lifestyle to, you know, build on that, build, you know, continue to living that way. And uh, the Nike case in particular was something where he got to capitalize on his Stormy Daniels fame and his uh, bully pulpit in the media could really sort of call out a company. Uh, and Nike actually testified that his tweets that he sent out, at least in the very short term, uh, caused 300, caused the shares to drop and hurt the company by $300 million for that moment that shares briefly dropped in the company. And Ben, I mean, we've all seen uh, what he uh, said to uh, Nike officials uh, in that court filing. I'm not going to repeat it here, but he said he will essentially, you know, destroy the company over this uh, extortion claim. But what you uh, alluded to by, you know, cutting off a, a large portion of its market cap. But you were also alluding to some of the other um, trials and charges he's facing. Yeah. Uh, he has one next week. Uh, he's accused of crimes that include defrauding clients out of millions of dollars, one of which was a mentally ill paraplegic. And then, of course, Stormy Daniels herself is alleging that uh, she, he did not represent her fairly and, and defrauded her. Isn't that right? Yes, that's right. That which is an entirely separate trial in 2022 that Stormy Daniels is alleging that as a result of his misrepresentation of her, that he defrauded her out of $300,000. Uh, but yeah, but this initial Nike case came from the fact that he's saying that he has proved Nike was engaging in illegal activity and he'll expose it unless Nike paid him $25 million to be an advisor. And that for Michael Avenatti to teach Nike how to be a better, more ethical company and avoid such uh, alleged illegal actions in the future. Um, and the California trial, which is the big one, which you mentioned, it's defrauding clients that the paraplegic uh, was a gentleman who, uh, you know, Avenatti kept on saying, oh, your settlement payment is coming to millions of dollars for this paraplegic. And the money had already come and Avenatti was holding on to it and using it for his own ends and just trying to put off paying the guy and sort of, you know, steering the money, steering the payment to his client, to its own account um, and taking advantage of that of the allegations of the indictment. And, you know, I just want to read uh, some of the, the statements that he said in court today. Uh, we got some um, reporting from the courtroom that, that he was crying once the sentence came down. Yes. He said, quote, I alone have destroyed my career, my relationships and my life. And there is no doubt I need to pay. Uh, let's kind of talk now about the rise and fall of Michael Avenatti, uh, although short lived. Remember, once he came uh, really out of the woodwork, out of nowhere uh, when he was representing Stormy Daniels uh, and remember Michael Cohen, former President Trump, the Trump Organization, they were all uh, ensnared in this and he became kind of a cause celeb for a lot of people, especially in the media, because obviously this was a, a ding against then President Trump. Isn't that right? Yes. No, he became an entire media personality. He was on cable news constantly in a creation of this media bubble because part of it wasn't not only that it was a ding against President Trump, that Avenatti was able to promote himself and to really sell himself to a to a certain category of left-leaning voters, sort of Democrats, sort of the resistance moms, that if you like to sit down and watch the MSNBC nightly lineup with a glass of wine, Michael Avenatti was a symbol of everything that was possible in, in fighting Donald Trump that he really sort of took advantage of the moment. And there was a period of time, this was less than a year from when he came forward with Stoney Daniels' allegations to his being indicted, where he had this entire rise and fall where there's months he was unescapable, he was bringing in new revelations uh, and advancing you know, allegations against President Trump. Then he was in Iowa, then he was sort of floating with the campaign for the presidency, and then it all came crashing down, that it was sort of an Icarus of the cable news cycle. And Ben, we, um, as you kind of alluded to, I mean, he was on cable news uh, almost every night. I, I'm going to allude to that very famous Chiron when Tucker Carlson brought yes. him on his show. He identified him as creepy porn lawyer. Uh, and then it kind of like dovetailed into all this talk uh, about, you know, his possible presidential ambitions uh, for, you know, 2020, maybe even beyond. But now, obviously, those have evaporated. What do you think that says, though, uh, about the media right now in its current form? Well, I think it says a lot of not just about the media, but about American culture. 
that Michael Avenatti is not sort of the first media creation candidate, kind of someone to have an entire media bubble that you can go through presidential campaigns. You could point to Donald Trump as an example of this. You could go back to Herman Cain. Um, and even further, in which that you have the media creating this own sort of different reality and building up someone um, and to a way where they became sort of this totemic ideal and that we sort of see it with members of Congress all the time, that politics becoming little different than celebrity culture. I mean, there were Abenadi statues and people, you know, that, you know, there's still ardent Abenadi defenders online to this day who still buy into this. And it's a way in which politics is not about ideology. It's about identity and sort of a level of celebrity culture and fan culture that people support politicians, not because they are political figures, rather, because Abenadi is probably not a politician, not because they agree with their views, but because they represent them in some way for the same reason people have favorite celebrities or favorite athletes, that there's a level of sort of self-identification, identity politics there, as opposed, you know, there's the ideological content of what Michael Avenatti believed in versus what a lot of, you can talk to a lot of figures, otherwise in politics, is relatively thin, um, but it's all about an attitude and a posture that elevated people or, you know, that they wanted to fight back against Trump and have, of, you know, their own their own Trump figure to own the conservatives the same way Trump owned the lips. And, and Ben, let's just kind of talk about, uh, you know, I interviewed him one time back in Las Vegas, and I think it was early 2018, possibly. Uh, don't quote me on the date. But anyway, he was basically held an event uh, and he was begging uh, to come on Fox News and debate some of the, the personalities there. Um, kind of go into some of the uh, conversations you had with him. Uh, did you kind of foresee this? Uh, did a lot of the things that he say to you kind of precipitate this fall? Um, there, there was nothing sort of precipitating the fall of my conversation. I remember talking to him in Iowa and trying to get a sense of what he actually believed, that uh, he was certainly not prepared for, okay, you're acting like you're president, but talk about policy. Um, where Michael Avenatti uh, did not have the most well thought out views of foreign policy or, you know, that he should have had sort of the basic one note answers, but beyond that, he hadn't gotten into detail. But I think the real moment where his fall came was with the allegations he presented against Brett Kavanaugh. Um, these were the false allegations where this woman, you know, had pretty preposterous claims that Kavanaugh was involved in a gang rape which turned out to be totally baseless. And that was the one time where Avenatti was clearly, there was no there, there, there's no evidence there that this was all debunked. It not only blew up sort of the concern against Kavanaugh with the allegations from women from Christine Blasey Ford, but blew up his credibility at a time that he had gotten to a point where he was someone who had gotten lucky at a, at a craps table and kept on you know, doubling down and doubling down and doubling down and gotten lucky a few times. And once it started to go wrong, it all went wrong and that he was riding a lucky streak that was sort of this, you didn't know when to, when to take his chips and walk away from the table. And that's what happened, that once things started to go wrong for Michael Avenatti, they went very, very wrong very quickly and obviously has ended up with him now becoming a you know, federal inmate. Uh, yeah, that's right. We we have the press release right in front of us from the from the court today. Michael Avenatti sentenced to over two years in prison for attempting to extort Nike and for defrauding his client Ben Jacobs from New York Magazine. Thanks so much uh, for coming on to live now to talk about this. We appreciate your time.